Hello, friends. Welcome to our Scaling Beyond RPA to Hyper Automation presentation. I'm Brian French with Salient Process, and I'll be your Hyper Automation Guide today. This is the second in a series of presentations on Hyper Automation. Previously, in part one of this series, we covered the disciplined, iterative, infinite loop that describes business driven hyper automation. Let's quickly review before moving into scaling beyond RPA. Business driven hyper automation starts with defining your business objectives or your digital ambition. Where do you want to go? You then explore and figure out what the vision is to get to your digital ambition. Once you have your vision to get there, you can hone in on the processes you'll need to change and do the necessary process analysis. Since automation should be applied wherever it makes sense, you'll want to apply some sort of automation alignment framework to determine the best fit of automation with the various types of work being done. The Digital Ops Toolbox has a lot of different tools you'll need to leverage to scale to hyper-automation. Automation alignment is a critical step to fit the right tools with the right work. Then we get into prototyping and delivering production solutions to satisfy your digital ambition. However, we need to monitor and measure our solutions to make sure we are meeting our digital ambition. Without this step, you have no idea if you are successful. Now that you have some initial success, you can begin to scale via rigorous methodologies, which should be a part of your COE efforts. Note you will need multiple COEs as there are a lot of disciplines involved in hyperautomation. We'll cover this in a later presentation. As you move forward, you'll continue to iterate and optimize your overall hyperautomation program so you can stay ahead of or catch your competition. To scale beyond RPA or siloed automation solutions, you'll need to grow beyond the common approach to automation, which is focused mostly on delivery and scale to the disciplined iterative portions of hyperautomation, which are much less commonly practiced. For a deeper dive into the iterative loop that is business-driven hyperautomation, see our previous presentation on this subject. Now that we have a foundation for hyperautomation, let's discuss the ugly truth about RPA. This is a quote from Elena Christopher, Senior Vice President of HFS Research. By the way, if you don't follow HFS Research, I highly recommend them. They are outstanding. You can find their blog at horsesforsources.com. The key thing in this quote is the last sentence. While there is a lot of hype around RPA, we're still not achieving true business transformation with it. However, this should be expected. RPA is task automation, not process automation. Most companies doing RPA are just doing standalone RPA. What the RPA vendors have started to put together since mid to late 2019 is a vision and tool set to do complemented RPA, but they are still not offering enough to do hyper-automation. It is interesting to hear RPA vendors discuss hyper-automation and how to them, it always leads back to RPA being the center of the universe. This is unfortunate, as there is no logical way RPA can be the center of the hyper-automation universe, given it is strictly task automation. We'll discuss where we believe RPA sits in upcoming slides. However, if you're an RPA vendor, of course that is the story you're going to tell. Now, let's look at the Digital Ops Toolbox Gartner defines, which we have slightly modified. At the top, we have Process Intelligence, a term I first saw used by HFS Research, which is a combination of data mining, process discovery, and process analysis. Document ingestion covers all those physical and digital documents that are still involved in many business processes and have to be ingested and digitally processed in order to accommodate automation. User and customer experience are more important than ever and need to be combined with your automation efforts to make sure you aren't doing things faster, but somehow creating worse experiences for your customers. Analytics and machine learning will be ubiquitous and applied across all of these tools. An Intelligent Business Process Management Suite, or IBPMS, is your overall process execution and orchestration platform. With more sophisticated processes, we just don't see how you can avoid using some sort of process execution engine. And as businesses move faster and faster, modeling and automating decisions to make sure you are making the right decisions at the speed of digital will become more and more relevant. 
With all of this, you'll need to be integrating across heterogeneous systems, and you won't want to have to be a genius to approach this. An integration platform as, as a service, or IPaaS, is the platform to accomplish this. When you start to want to scale your automation efforts beyond RPA, at least in relation to the Hyper Automation Infinite Loop, the initial area you'll want to focus on are the first three steps of business objective or digital ambition, exploring and thinking about various ways to transform your business, and then modeling it out. When you start to think about the number and diversity of automation tools available in the Digital Ops Technology Toolbox, it becomes apparent automation and scaling to hyper automation is not a trivial exercise. It is necessary to determine your automation scope based on the desired business outcome or your digital ambition. Gardner's Hyper Automation Spectrum is a great way to see exactly where RPA can help with your digital ambition. But more importantly, what other types of automation you'll need to consider to reach your business objectives? The way this works is we have business objectives or your digital ambition along the right axis with our scale going from immediate savings on the bottom up to business creation slash reinvention slash recalibration on the top. Along the left axis, we have our degree of automation, which scales from routine to dynamic. Along the bottom axis, we have the scope of automation, which goes from narrow to broad. And then across the top axis, we have something salient added, which is the breadth of processes, which scales from a single activity to a process or multiple processes up to a value chain. We added this because we felt it was critical to highlight the scope of processes the different tools in hyperautomation can cover. Now, as you move from the lower left-hand corner of the matrix up to the upper right-hand corner of the matrix, your risk, reward, cost, and business impact go from being very low at the lower left-hand extreme to being very high at the point where the breadth of process and business objective axes can join. So, from this spectrum, what you want to do, just as we describe in the Business Driven Hyper Automation Infinite Loop, is start with your business objective or digital ambition. What's it, what is it you want to achieve with your business? This will determine the level of hyper automation you need to strive towards. If you're just looking for immediate cost savings, with little to no change in the way your business operates, and the tasks you are targeting are very predictable and repeatable, task automation will be just the ticket for you. If you want to move beyond routine automation and cost savings, but don't have a digital ambition of business transformation, the process automation level in the spectrum may be just the thing for you. Or, if you're wanting to transform your business, you will need to get to the areas of orchestration across functions and business operations creation and reinvention. Now that you know where you want to go and where that puts you in the hyper automation spectrum, let's figure out what tools in the digital ops toolbox fit where in this spectrum. As a reminder, we'll be pulling from the tools in the Digital Ops Technology Toolbox to fill out the spectrum. Of course, you don't have to limit yourself to these tools, but these are the items we'll focus on. We'll start in the lower left-hand corner and work our way diagonally across the spectrum to the upper right. So, task automation. This is essentially RPA. RPA is really great at automating routine, repeatable tasks. That is low-hanging fruit, and a great deal of the time, it brings immediate savings and ROI. However, remember the statement from HFS Research about the fact all we're doing with RPA is moving data around faster, but not really transforming processes. I would say that should be expected. RPA is not a process transformation or even process automation tool. It is a task automation tool. As you can see from where it lands in the hyper-automation spectrum, it is as far away from the upper right-hand corner where business and process reinvention happen as possible. Task automation, or RPA, is very limited in terms of any type of transformative effect it can have on your business, at least as a standalone automation tool. Think about it. What you're doing with robotic task automation is making your existing processes run faster. However, you aren't fundamentally changing anything other than speed and accuracy. So let's move on to process automation. This is where complemented RPA starts to play a role. With process intelligence, you can start to look at your processes for specific automation possibilities 
and analyze how those changes will impact your processes. However, complemented RPA is still highly limited in what you can achieve. It is really limited to simpler processes that don't span functions or need sophisticated orchestration. As you start to move into orchestration across functions and business operations creation or reinvention, that is where you get into more sophisticated processes and the hard but highly rewarding work of transforming your processes and businesses occur. RPA plays a much smaller role here. It certainly has a role, but it is a bit player. Essentially, you are looking at your processes and determining for each type of work being done what the best automation tool is to get that work done. Sometimes that will be RPA, but many times it will not. Essentially, RPA becomes just one possibility among many for completing a particular task within your overall process flow. As always, it comes back to your business objective. If you are trying to achieve more than just immediate savings and are looking to transform your business or even automate more than just tasks, standalone RPA isn't enough. You'll need to look to leverage more of the tools in the Digital Ops Toolbox. Now that you know what tools will be necessary, depending on what you're trying to achieve, you can go more granular and determine for each activity in a process, what is the best automation fit depending on the type of work being done. Let's take a look at our hyper automation infinite loop again. Where you are now in this loop is in the context of an activity within a single process and determining for each activity in that process, what type of work is being done. This will tell you what type of automation tool will be the most appropriate for your needs. We're going to build out Salient's automation alignment matrix. The matrix has two axes. The bottom or X axis is based on the volume of work with the scale going from low to high. The left or Y axis is based on the uniqueness of work with multiple scales. We have one scale going from repetitive to unique and another traversing from pro programmatic to transactional to exploratory. The way you use this matrix is to analyze your process, which is step three of the hyper automation infinite loop. Then you take a look at the type of work being done at each activity or task in that process. You can then layer the type of work onto this matrix and thus try to determine what type of automation will help you get closer to your digital ambition. In our opinion, you should never lose sight of that digital ambition or business objective. Everything needs to be driving towards that. We have covered extensively in other blogs and presentations how to use our automation alignment matrix, so we'll stay very high level here and go quickly through some examples of fitting the type of work with the proper automation. First, AI and analytics should be ubiquitous throughout the matrix, regardless of the type of work being done. AI is being infused into every tool in the Digital Ops toolbox, and you need to monitor and measure no matter what type of work being done. Let's look at the lower right-hand corner where RPA plays a big role. Here you have high volume and highly repetitive work. RPA is a great fit here, although depending on the type of task being done, other tools may come into play as well, such as decision management and intelligent capture or document ingestion. This quadrant essentially represents straight through processing. From there, we move to the left and into the lower left-hand side of the matrix where we have low volume, but still highly repetitive work. This is where sequential workflow or process execution engines can play a role. The work is low volume and may require human interaction for exceptions. Thus workflow may be appropriate. RPA is still a player here, but it may be unattended RPA instead of attended RPA. In other words, a human may decide when the bot runs and possibly interact with the bot as it executes. However, Developing bots here needs to be weighed carefully. If the work is low volume, then it needs to be determined whether the resources necessary to build the attended bots might be better spent on automating high volume work. As we move into the upper left hand corner of the matrix, we're into the realm of unique exploratory low volume work. Bots have minimal, if any, presence here. This is the realm of research, strategy, and other efforts requiring diligent thought and long efforts. An example at our core company is quarterly planning. While we may be able to build a process to define the steps we need to take every quarter, a bot will not be able to help to analyze the market and make the strategic decisions. However, our analysis could be augmented by data science 
and machine learning to make our decisions less biased. Lastly, in the upper right-hand corner, we have high volume and unique work. This is where ad hoc and sequential workflow thrive. Thus, you'll want to strongly consider leveraging IBPMS technology to orchestrate your processes, while also leveraging a DMS to collect and automate decisions. At a high level, that is how the automation alignment matrix helps you complete step four of the business-driven hyper-automation infinite loop. This was just scratching the surface of what kind of analysis you can do with our automation alignment matrix. And there are certainly a lot more tools available in the digital ops toolbox to consider than we sampled here. However, this should give you an idea of how to approach this. An automation alignment matrix is a key step in helping you scale beyond RPA and achieve hyper automation. In summary, standalone RPA has made a lot of tasks execute faster and with fewer errors. But RPA by itself does not transform processes. It just makes your existing processes run faster. Leveraging the tools from the Digital Ops Toolbox will at least give you the ability to transform your processes and business and scale beyond RPA. The hyper automation spectrum helps you determine, based on your business objective or digital ambition, what tools from the Digital Ops Toolbox you'll need to scale beyond RPA. From there, Within each process, you can analyze the type of work being done at each task and choose the proper automation tool to help you achieve your goals. All of this, in summary, will help you scale beyond RPA. As we mentioned at the start of this presentation, this is the second in a series. We'll follow this with presentations about structuring your hyper-automation organization and leveraging IBM Digital Business Automation to do hyper-automation. In a previous presentation, we discussed what is hyperautomation. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to view this presentation. We greatly appreciate it. I'm Brian French with Salient Process. Through helping you automate your processes, we give you the freedom to be great.